What's good, people? Lou Johnson here, aka Cosmic Lou. This episode, I want to try something different, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. So, let's get into it. This week, we had the release of the highly anticipated book, The Man of Steel, issue number one, written by DC's newest acquisition, Brian Michael Bendis, and illustrated by Ivan Rice. Now, I really enjoyed Bendis' runs on Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and The Invincible Iron Man, so I went into this with high hopes, and he did not disappoint. Now, where this story picks up is many, many years ago on Krypton, and you find a character named Rogal Zar pleading his case to what appears to be the circle of cosmic elders or cosmic gods. And he wants to put Krypton in check because of how they're uh, going around expanding their power against weaker planets to expand their uh, scientific knowledge. And he feels like it's going to start a galactic war between the smaller planets. And he just doesn't like the thought of that. So he just wants them to approve him cleansing the Kryptonians for uh, being just way too powerful and walking over people. So then we fast forward to present day Metropolis where we find Superman just finished scooping up Firefly and Killer Moth on his way to a building fire in downtown Metropolis. When he gets there he shows off a pretty neat trick to where he pulls all the fire off of the building and puts it on himself. Kind of cool if you ask me. And after the fire was put out, Superman is, you know, inspecting the building and walking around. And that's when he runs into Melody Moore, the new deputy fire chief. You know, she comes off a little bit flirty, but, you know, it's Superman. Um, so, <laughs> of course, she's going to be flirty. And so she goes on to tell him that she doesn't think that this building fire was an accident. And how she thinks it's probably arson because there have been too many building fires in the local area for it to be just a coincidence. And so, you know, he says, listen, if you come up with any information, feel free to call Clark Kent or Lois Lane. Then he changes his story and says, well, just call Kent. He'll gladly help you with the investigation. And so he goes and flies off and she's kind of, you know, smitten instantly by Superman. And he doesn't dismiss it, which is kind of strange to me because, you know, he's supposed to be down with Lois. So so with that. So then we flash back to, you know, many, many years ago when we found Rogal Zar on his home planet. And then Api Ali Apsa, you know, the uh, original Green Lantern or the establisher, the founder of the Green Lantern Corps, goes and visits him and lets him know, you know what, the circle listened and considered your words carefully, but we're going to decide that, you know, we don't want you to cleanse the Kryptonians. We just want to, you know, let them run their course. And so, he, of course, he's going to be upset. He wanted to do this. And they're like, no, just let them run their course. The Kryptonians have not, you know, not acted aggressive toward anyone. And just let them rise and fall as needed. And Rogel's art does not, you know, appreciate what they said. He really wants this to happen because, you know, he has this grander picture and a bigger scheme that he wants to execute. But, you know, he asked for permission. They said no. And there you go. So then we fast forward back to present day Metropolis and we find Clark Kent at his desk diligently working, typing up this story about the downtown fires and how they may be arson. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So Perry White is on him wanting a bigger story than just arson. And you can see Clark looking over his shoulder and seeing Lois Lane inside of a office. It appears that, you know, she has boxes in there and she's basically unpacking and occupying a new office. And he kind of looks happy, but then he looks down at a photo of, of Lois and John, and he gets kind of sad, which, you know, it is confusing. And it looks like it goes into a memory of, of what's happened in the past. You see John trying on some clothes, and he doesn't really fit in them. And so, you know, he's like, Dad, what happened? Dad said, well, it looks like you hit a growth spurt. And then you see them, you know, living a, a, a normal life, you know, as normal as Clark Kent, aka Superman, and Lois Lane can have with a super son. And then all of a sudden, something happens, something flashes in, and it looks like danger. You know, it looks like something bad's going on. 
And that's where the book ends. So where does that leave us? At a cliffhanger, of course. How else do you expect them to try to get you back to read issue number two? And all the other ones after that? Hmm? Like I said before, I really enjoyed all of Bendis' work when he was back at Marvel. And I really have a good feeling that he's going to handle this very well at DC. I think he's going to do some big things. I'm looking forward to it. And it's going to be a weekly book. You know, so every week we're going to get something good. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I really hope that things go well. I just really want to thank you guys for all the support you've given me. I really do appreciate it. So until next episode, this is Cosmic Lou. Mahalo. Spread the love.